Hello there, so in this episode of 3ds Max for Maya users, we're going to go over how to uh, set up image planes in 3ds Max. Uh, so, in Maya, it's really easy to set up image planes. You usually just go to your uh, to whatever perspective or orthographic view where you want your image and just go to the file and uh, image plane and then just choose your file. Uh, this is probably the only thing that I found in 3ds Max It's not really efficient to do. It would be nice if they had it exactly like Maya. Uh, but in 2ds Max it takes a few more steps just to get the image plane to work. Okay, so let me go ahead and delete that. Okay. So, to create an image reference, um, you have to go to your image first. Okay, so I have this image here I downloaded from Darksiders 2, a few sorts and such. So we have to know the dimensions and the size of the image. So to do that, right mouse click, go to our properties, and we find that our image is 736 by 370. So we have to know that. Okay. So now in Max, we have to create a plane. Yes, we have to create a plane. So we go to plane. Okay, I'm just going to create it interactively. Okay. Also going to let me go to the modify menu again, and I'm going to set my segments just to one. And from here, we want to set our scale, our size of the uh, the plane, so that it matches the one with the image. So, if I remember correctly, it was 736, which is the width. So, I'm going to set it to 73.6, just to have it smaller and so that it doesn't get too large. Okay, uh, I forgot the other one. 370. Okay. By 370. 37. Okay. So we have our plane here, and you probably, if you've been using Maya for a long time, you probably have done something like this in the past. Uh, in 2014 and 15, that's where they really fixed the whole image plane in Maya. Hopefully they do something like that in Max soon. Okay. So to set up our image on this plane, we have to apply it as a material. Yes, as a material. Okay, so to open the material editor, uh, which is similar to the hyper shape type thing from Maya, you click right here or press M to open it. Okay, so we get this window. And we're going to just create a standard material, just like a Lambert from Maya. So click on it and drag it to our window here so that we can see it. Double click on it so that we get it. Uh, our options here. I choose the blend. It doesn't matter. Let's leave it that way. Well, you can set the glossiness to zero, I guess. Anyway, uh, go back to expand where it says maps so that we can actually uh, assign our image to it, which is going to go under the diffuse. Okay. Uh, also, instead of opening the maps here, you can also just come here, click on that, and drag outside, and from here you can choose your image. So in this case, in this case, I'm going to use a bitmap because it's a picture. So if it's a Photoshop file or uh, just an image, uh, you can click on bitmap. And it's on my desktop, so I'm going to choose that image. So now our image has been applied to the material. Let's go ahead and see our model, it doesn't have it, because we have to apply our material to our model. So to do so, we can uh, right mouse click, assign material to selection, okay. So now it's uh, still nothing on our model, so we have to click right here, let me see, it's not that one. Actually, yeah. So to see our material on the, on the object, Click right here, shows shaded on our model, and 
we can see our object now with our image. Notice how in our wireframe um, orthographic views, it's still a wireframe. It's not a, it's not shaded like we can see it here. Okay, so to change that, instead of uh, making it uh, shaded in the wireframe, it's going to be a problem because once we start modeling in our orthographic views. Normally you want to see the wireframe of the model so that you can match to the image. Okay, so to do so, uh, we have to go to the layers. Uh, I borrowed this idea from someone. Uh, I thought it was pretty neat to use the layer system. Okay, so select the object, make sure you select it. And we're going to click right here to create a new layer with it. Name it reference image. Okay, expand it. I haven't named uh, my objects. You can do so as well. Actually, I can't name it because it's not an editable poly. Actually, no, I should be able to name it from here. Image. Oops, reference. Name it reference. Okay. So, next reference. So, now from here, I'm going to right click under the reference image layer okay not the object then go to layer properties and under my display set that to shade it so that it doesn't uh, so that we can actually see it in our orthographic views go to freeze freeze just means you, you can't select it if you want to select it then you don't have to click there uh, show frozen in gray. I'm going to deselect that so it doesn't show gray. And that's all we have to do here. And now, under for our object, we also have to change some things under object properties. Here we have to click by object uh, freeze, and that should pretty much do it. Okay. So now, as you can see in our orthographic view, we can actually see it shaded. We can actually see the, the texture, and we are in the wireframe mode. If we don't do it this way, uh, we won't be able to see it shaded. We won't be able to see our image under the wireframe mode. So that's the, that's why we have to do it this way. Okay, so that's pretty much how you set up image planes. Um, so. I know it's a lot more complicated than Maya, and it takes a few more steps, a few more minutes of our lives, but uh, it's something that we have to do in Max, okay?